OK, we have a triangle, ABC, and we're given uh, all the dimensions, uh, the three sides, and we're asked to find the size of one of the angles, angle C. In these questions, it's a good idea to do a quick sketch. Um, obviously, this one isn't to scale, but that doesn't matter. It just lets me label my sides um, and get a visual idea of what we're dealing with. So side AB is 11 centimetres, side BC is 7 centimetres, and side CA is 8. And it's angle C that we're after, so after this angle here. So if we've got uh, three sides and we want an angle, that's always a cosine rule. Um, so if we write it out, c squared is equal to, well, the two other sides, a squared plus b squared, minus two lots of the same two sides, a and b, uh, multiplied by cos of angle c. So angle c is what we want to find in this case, but we know everything else. So the simplest way is to substitute in. Uh, side c is 11, so 11 squared is equal to a, which is 7 squared, uh, b squared, which is 8 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 8 times cos of angle c. Commonly marks can be dropped in these questions by poor rearranging. So I say work out all the squares and all the multiplications first and fill them in. So 11 squared is 121, 7 squared plus 8 squared is 113, 2 times 7 times 8 is 112. So we have this simplified line. And now I can uh, isolate cos of c. I want that to be positive to make my life easier. So I'll add 112 cos c to both sides. That means on the left we have 121 plus the 112 cos c. Uh, on the left I simply have 113 left. Um, now I want to get rid of that 121, so I'll subtract, leaving just 112 cos c on the left and 113 minus 121, so minus 8 on the right. Finally, divide by 112, and we've isolated cos of c as minus 8 over 112. So the last step to find an angle using trig is always to use the inverse function. So c is cos to the minus 1 of minus 8 over 112. Just be careful, this is a question about an angle in radians, uh, so make sure you're in radians mode. But uh, assuming that you are, type that in just as you see it there. Um, and you give the answer 1.64228, and it goes on. But we want it to three sig figs, so round it to 1.64 radians. And that's the answer to part A. Okay, in part B, we want the area of the triangle. Okay, so um, here we can use the formula uh, half AB sine C, and the A and B refer to two sides and C must be the included angles, so the angle between those two sides. So we know angle C, so we want to use these two sides, uh, A and B, either side of it. And this is a, quite a simple question, substitute into the formula. Half AB sine C, so half times 7 times 8 times sine of the angle that we just found, 1.64228 and so on. Uh, the way I would do this is use the ANTS key, so you've got the exact value so I would just type in half times 7 times 8 times sine of ants, and then you get an answer that you know is accurate. In this case, 27.928 blah 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 blah. Uh, again, we are asked to give the answer to three sig figs, so round that to 27.9, and the units are centimetres squared. And that's it. Right, here we've got a lovely... Uh, typical trigonometry show that question. So um, we have to show that one equation can be written in a different form. And for any show that, uh, we have to start with the thing that we're given. Okay, so we have to start by writing that expression out and we need to do stuff to it until we get the second line. Um, so let's get started. We'll just write out the equation that we're given. 5 sine x equals 1 plus 2 cos squared x. So we need to get rid of cos because it isn't in the expression that we want. And we know that cos squared can be written as 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, we know this from sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. So that is simply substituted in there. Now because it's a show that question, we don't want to skip out any of the working here. So don't be tempted to expand the brackets as you go. Simply write 1 plus 2 lots of what cos squared x is. So 2 lots of 1 minus sine squared. Then we can expand the brackets, get 1 plus 2 minus 2 sine squared x. And 
that's going to get you the first mark having substituted that in and expanded um, and really we look at what we are asked to get and we see that all the terms are on the left and if I move all my terms to the left I'm going to get what I'm after so I'll add 2 sine squared x uh, to both sides I've got the 5 sine x already there and I'll subtract 3 which leaves me with 0 on the right and a quick check reveals that that is exactly what I was asked to show. Part B, we're asked to solve um, for that range of x this equation here, which we know we've just shown is equal to the equation that we started with, um, but we're not going to the initial form, we're just asked to solve the version that we've just found. So let's have a look at the equation. Uh, it's a quadratic, we've got sine squared, so it's a quadratic in sine x. Um, you might not need to do a substitution here or a comparison, but I like to compare it with the same quadratic but with uh, a different variable, a simpler one. So I use capital X here. So the same coefficients, 2, 5, and minus 3, but I'm replacing uh, sine X with a big X. And we just need to factorize that. Okay, so 2X squared in the front means I'm going to have a 2X and an X, and the minus 3 means that the two numbers need to multiply to give minus 3. So it's either 3 and minus 1, or minus 3 and 1. A quick play around in my head, and maybe try a few ideas, and I can see eventually that it's 2x minus 1 times x plus 3, and a quick expand of that in my head. I double check, and I can see, yeah, that does expand to give me the correct quadratic. So the solutions that come from that, x equals a half, or x equals minus 3. But of course my variable isn't x, my variable is sine x. Uh, so from that I can say, well, therefore sine x is either equal to a half, or sine x is equal to minus 3. That would give us two uh, routes to pursue, but of course I can reject this one straight away because sine x is always between minus 1 and plus 1, so that bit has no solutions. I simply need to concentrate now on solving sine x equals 1 half. So I can draw myself uh, the graph of sine x. The range we're given is 0 to 360, so that graph should come really easily to you by now. You can see from the way I'm drawing this one, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, just have to have roughly the right shape um, and put on the key features so 360, 180, the maximum value is 1, label my axes just for good measure. So that's my graph of y equals sine x but what I'm solving is sine x equals a half. So I'll add to my graph y equals a half, the horizontal line. Don't need to go all the way across because I know it's not going to cross sine x again in the region uh, that I'm working with. But these two points where it crosses gives me my two solutions, my x1 and x2. So I know I need two solutions. The first one, the acute one, I get from simply doing the inverse function. So sine to the minus 1 of a half. You ought to know this by now, but if not, hey, your calculator's there, and it'll tell you that that is 30 degrees. To find the second one, let's look at the graph. We're going to do this by symmetry. Um, the bit that I'm shading in blue there is 30 degrees, we just worked that out. So that other little section is also 30 degrees by symmetry. So I can find my second x value by simply working backwards from 180 by 30 degrees. So 180 minus 30 gives me my second solution which is 150 degrees. There we are, I've got two solutions and we're done. Right, in this C2 question we've got 5 sine theta equals 2 cos theta and we're asked to find the value of tan theta. Now I've got a friendly identity which helps us link these three. We know that tan theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta and a cursory inspection of this equation that we're given uh, lets us see that we can actually get tan theta quite easily. If we divide both sides by cos we get 5 sine theta over cos theta equals 2 and well, we can replace sine theta over cos theta at this point with tan theta. So 5 tan theta equals 2, and simply dividing by 5 shows me that tan theta equals 2 fifths, or 0.4. So that's part A. Part B, we're now asked to solve this equation, 5 sine 2x equals 2 cos 2x. Hopefully, fairly easily, we can spot the similarity between this and part A and we've got here in part b. In fact, the only difference is that we replaced theta with 2x. So just like tan theta was 2 fifths, I can now say that tan 2x is equal to 2 fifths. So really that's a fairly straightforward equation to solve now. Okay, so we can think about, first of all, though, being careful of the range of values. So if x is going to be in the range 0 
to 360 then 2x which is what is the variable uh, inside tan here uh, that would need to be in the range 0 to 720 so the initial values that I'm getting for 2x are going to need to be in that range so I it's optional whether you sketch for tan because uh, the way it repeats is quite simple uh, but if it helps do a quick sketch of tan labeling the asymptotes and the points where it crosses the axes I'll speed this up um, and the key points there that's 360 that's 720 and um, well, I'll do my best to draw this with the graphics tablet it's not going to be perfect but it'll show you the rough shape so it comes up from zero and disappears up there as an asymptote reappears and goes up there same shape repeating every 180 degrees so now that I've got my graph I can see the fact that actually I'm solving tan 2x equals 2 fifths so I need to plot the line y equals 2 fifths so I draw that line across there it's going to cross y equals tan x or tan 2x quite a few times this last one is outside the range so I'm not interested in that one because 2x is beyond 720 so x will be greater than 360 but these other points where it crosses they're each going to give me solutions so each of these will give me a possible value for 2x and we can then half those to get the values for x so 2x1, 2x2, 2x3 and 2x4 so uh, the first value, the principal value, 2x1 the acute one is what's going to come from the inverse function so tan to minus 1 of 2 fifths so doing that on my calculator being careful to be in degrees mode uh, we get 21.801 and dot 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 degrees um, so the other values again this is where you wouldn't necessarily have to draw the graph um, you can realize that tan 2x has a period of 180 degrees so we can keep getting additional values by simply adding 180 degrees so the second value x2 or 2x2 is going to be the first one 21.801 plus 180 that's simply 201.8 etc degrees and we'll do the same thing just keep adding 180 to get the uh, third and fourth values for uh, what 2x could be so 2x3 is the previous one plus 180 which is 381.8 and 2x4 again by adding 180 to the previous one uh, we get in this case 561.801 dot 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 so we've got these four values and they're what 2x could be okay so the last step is to divide all of these values by 2 to get my individual values for what x can be so x1 the first value we take 21.8 uh, use the exact value from a calculator um, divide it by 2 and round it to one decimal place we get 10.9 degrees x2 we're using 201.801 and again use lots of decimal places or the exact value divide that by 2 and we get 100.9 degrees and x3 we're dividing 381.801 by 2 to give me 190.9 again that's to one decimal place and my final value x4 comes from dividing uh, 561.8 by 2 that gives me uh, 280 degrees or 280.9 degrees to one decimal place and there we have four solutions and that's it we've solved it okay so we've got a diagram which shows a sector OAB of a circle and the radius is given as 9 centimeters and the angle there as 0.7 radians and the first thing we're asked for is the length of the arc AB. So this is kind of straightforward. Um, we have a formula for arc length, r theta. And this applies as long as the angle is in radians, which it is. So this question, uh, easy marks really. You just multiply the radius of 9 by the angle of 0.7. And we get 6.3 centimetres exactly. Part B. Uh, we're asked for the area of the corresponding sector, the sector OAB. And again, for this, there's a formula which should be very familiar to you by now, the half r squared theta. So plug it in. We have a half times the radius of 9 squared multiplied by our angle of 0 0.7, and that comes to 28.35 uh, 
per centimetre squared. That's the exact answer, so that's not rounded, but you could round it to three significant figures if you like, as uh, 28.4. Okay, next we're told that the line AC is perpendicular to OA, and that's already visible on the diagram because we have that little right angle symbol, um, so everything is as it appears, and we're asked to find the length of AC. So this turns out to be a simple trigonometry question. If we label that side x, considering the angle that we know, 0.7 radians, x is the opposite side, um, and the side that we already know, 9 centimetre, is the adjacent. So given that we know the adjacent and we want the opposite, and we know the angle, that it tells us to use tan. So we can use what we know about tan theta is opposite over adjacent. So tan of my angle, 0.7, is x divided by 9. Rearrange that by multiplying by 9 and we get x. x is simply 9 times tan of 0.7, so 9 tan 0.7 and stick it in your calculator. So this comes to uh, 7.58 centimeters when you round it to two decimal places. Uh, one thing to be careful of for this question is that we're dealing with radians and you might just have been doing a question that's not in radians so make sure your calculator is in the correct mode. Uh, finally, we're told that the region H is basically as it appears on the diagram, and we're asked to find the area of H to two decimal places. So we do this by subtraction. H is going to be the area of the whole triangle, OAC, minus the area of the sector, OAB. So it's a right angle triangle, so we can simply use half times base times height. Um, we're subtracting the area that we worked out in part B, 28.35. So for my base, I'm going to use 9, and for my height, I'm going to use x, because that's perpendicular to 9, um, but I'm not going to use 7.58, I'm going to use 9 tan 0.7, because that is exact. The alternative to this is to use the value that's in your calculator. So a half times base times height is a half times 9 times 9 tan 0.7, and when we take away the area of the sector, 28.35, we get... Well, it comes out like this, 5.7626 dot, 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 but we want our answer to two decimal places, so that will round to 5.76, and the units are centimetres squared for area. And that's it. Right, the uh, C2 question with two different uh, trig equations in it. So part A, we are given a range of x in degrees, 0 to 360, and this is the equation we have to solve. First thing we note is that the variable inside the trig function is x plus 45, it's not x. So that means we have another level of what we have to do. First we're going to solve it uh, to find all the values of x plus 45 that fit our range, and only then do we subtract 45 right at the end to get the values for x. So, okay, first of all let's consider the range of values for x plus 45. If x is 0 to 360, then x plus 45 is 45 bigger than that, so 45 to 405 degrees. So we're looking for solutions to that, and we'll look at the graph for that in a minute. Um, but basically to start with, uh, we can divide by 3 and get sine of x plus 45 degrees is 2 thirds. And your calculator will, uh, will then give you the principal value. So if we do sine to the minus 1 of 2 thirds, we get our first value for x plus 45 degrees is 41.810 dot 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 degrees. Um, so that's our principal value. Um, and let's refer to that as x1. So that's the first possible value for x1 plus 45 degrees. To find the other ones, we're going to have to consider the graph of sine x. Uh, so uh, let's just label that up. 180, 360, um, and the values that we're going to get from this, remember, are values for x plus 45. So, um, if we look at the equation up there, it's 2 thirds is what we're reading off from. So we'll plot the line y equals 2 thirds, sketch that on there. We can see that it initially crosses twice and again. Now this third point where it crosses, we don't know if that's in the range or not. So let's construct the first one, that's 41.8103. So let's label it on there, 41.81. Um, but we said that x plus 45 has to be in that range, uh, and this one isn't. So that isn't going to give me a solution, but we can use this and the symmetry to get the other values. So let's take this one here. Okay, um, 
I'll call that value x2 plus 45. Okay, that's my second option, and that one is going to be in the range that I need. Using a bit of symmetry, that is simply going to be 180 minus um, our principal value, so 41.81. And that comes to uh, 138 and a bit. Okay, so keep the decimals there for now. That's the first value that's going to give me a solution. If you look what this blue line is here, uh, that value there with a bit of symmetry again is going to be 360 plus my principal value. So 360 plus 41.8 in a bit. And that gives me another value for what x plus 45 can be. In this case, 401.81 dot 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 dot. So I've got two values. Um, a common mistake is to think these are solutions, but these are values for x plus 45. And remember, the last step, uh, as I wrote up here, is to subtract 45. So we simply subtract 45 from both those values. Um, so x2 uh, is simply 138.189 minus 45 degrees. And uh, that comes to 93 and a bit. Um, and remember that uh, if you look up at the question, it says it wants the answers in degrees to 1 dp. So we'll round that to 93.2 degrees. Next, we'll do the same thing to get the other value. So x3 is 401.8 and a bit minus 45, and that comes to 356.810. Once rounded, we get 356.8 degrees. And those are my two solutions to part A. OK, part B. Let's have a look. We, uh, well, the first thing we notice is that um, the range is given in terms of pi. We're told the answer is in radians. So before you do anything else, let's just switch your calculator to radians mode. Now that that's sorted, let's have a look at our equation. Okay, so it's got uh, sine in it, and it's got cos. To solve that, we would want to get rid of one of them, and we notice that sine appears only as sine squared. Uh, sine squared is dead easy to get rid of because we know that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cos squared. So we take that identity and we just substitute it into our equation. So instead of 2 sine squared x, we have 2 lots of 1 minus cos squared x. And um, it does say show clearly how you obtained your answer, so don't try and skip any stages of the working here. It won't help you later on. Um, so once we've got that in there, expand the brackets, 2 minus 2 cos squared x. We've still got the plus 2 there, and that's equal to 7 cos x. Uh, my cos squared term is negative, so I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side, because this is a quadratic now in cos x. So if I put everything on the right, I've got 2 cos squared x plus 7 cos x uh, minus the 4 equals 0. OK, so our job now is to factorise this. Um, and... I can see that in my brackets, one of them is going to have to have 2 cos x, and the other one is going to have to have cos x. And, um, well, use whatever your method you like for factorising. Basically, I can look at that and see, well, the two numbers have got to multiply to give minus 4. That gives the options of 4 and 1, or 2 and 2, with 1 being negative. If you play around a little bit, uh, you can see that what we actually need is to have a minus 1 there and a plus 4 there. Check that out for yourself by expanding the brackets. Uh, in any case, your solutions, therefore, are cos x equals a half or cos x equals minus 4. But cos x can't be minus 4. It's always between minus 1 and plus 1, so we reject that straight away. That gives me no solutions, and we simply focus on solving cos x equals 1 half. So let's have a look at the graph of cos um, from 0 to, to 2 pi. And, well... We're dealing with uh, cos x equals a half, so the calculator will give you a principal value, although you ought to know this one, really. It's one of the special ones. Cos to the minus 1 over half is actually pi over 3, so that is 60 degrees if we were in that sort of format. Um, so looking at the graph, if I draw a line across at y equals a half, you can see where the two solutions come from. So the first one that I've marked here, that is pi over 3, and the second solution is going to appear over here. Um, so we simply need to find the value for that. Now using symmetry, if this little bit on the left is pi over 3, then this little bit on the right that I'm labeling here is also pi over 3. So by symmetry, to get my second value, x2, I simply need to come back by pi over 3 from 2 pi. 
So 2 pi minus pi over 3, and you should be able to do that just in your head, but you calculate it there, it's a C2 paper. That's 5 pi over 3, and those are my two solutions. So write them out, we've got x is pi over 3, or 5 pi over 3, they're my solutions, and we're done.